Hi guys, and welcome back to season two of Between Us Girlies. I'm Bran. I'm Lindsay. I'm Bailey. I'm Casey. And did you miss us? Because we <laughs> are so back. We have a packed episode for you guys. We are going to talk a lot of shit, spill a lot of tea, and let's just get right into it. How is everyone's break? Bailey, you want to kick us off and sure. fill us in on what you did the past month? Yes. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so Hi, happy Bailey. to be back. I can't ex- contain my I excitement. Um, I honestly want to come back after months with like a new look, but my Ozempic <laughs> plug uh, <laughs> fell through. So unfortunately, I do have good news. Um, last time you guys saw me, I was in shambles over losing my job. I really wasn't in shambles. I feel like I've still been like good spirits. I got a few job offers, y'all. Woo! <laughs> like, let's go. So I'm currently in the process of just like all of that stuff. Like, I had to get my trans- She's in demand. Yeah, I had to get my transcript from my college, which came to my attention. Um, I didn't do so hot junior year. <laughs> Spring of 2016 was my, not my year. That really hurt. Um, but no, I feel like I just had like a month of rest and relaxation. Like, I, <laughs> like I feel like I, I don't know, I really like prioritize just like working on myself and like going to the gym and like working around my apartment and just like keeping myself busy I feel like with the mm-hmm. podcast like not for a month like that I was like oh my god I need something uh, but yeah I just think like being unemployed that was not fun for the past month I mean I'm still unemployed like I don't I'm not physically at a job right now um, but I just want to say like interviewing for jobs is low-key embarrassing <laughs> like I, I think it's my pride like the way I like was having out-of-body experience I was like oh my god I'm actually begging and pleading and slobbering for these people to get me a job like please pick me like I was like this can't I'm like once I got the one job offer I'm like that's it <laughs> like you know what's I can't more embarrassing is once you get the job and then your employer talks about your interview <laughs> like yeah. and they like reference it and you're like oh my god I, that wasn't the real me like that was the interview me but like now that I'm working here's who I really am but like that's almost more embarrassing is like having to address who you were in the interview exactly but yeah that's been that's my month how's everybody else doing wait I feel like we should do peaks and pits of break so oh, we can right. fill everyone in because we've been gone for what like three four weeks, four weeks yeah. yeah that's a lot of time so let's do peak and pit what was your peak of the break and your pit of the break my peak was getting <laughs> getting a job yep. um mm-hmm. my pit um being unemployed and having to make budget cuts <laughs> <laughs> i will say it, budget cuts have been made and i'm, I'm okay with it i'm okay with it mm-hmm. i have i've had press-ons now and i will say press-ons are in for summer 2024 i have never felt better my nails have never looked better mm. yeah that's my peaks and pits love it <laughs> Case, you want to go next? Yeah. Okay. So my peak and my pit. My This month was crazy. I feel like I did a million things in May. My peak would probably be my vacation. I went to Napa in Arizona and it was so nice. And I, I didn't even tell you guys about this, but I did a mud bath in Napa and it was the craziest experience I've ever had. You like go to this spa and it's a couple's like spa treatment. My boyfriend got it for me. And you get completely naked and you're like in these little robes and then you walk into this room and it's just two bathtubs filled to the brim with hot mud. We should do that. Well, it sounds so great. And it is crazy. (laughs) Like it is literally a bathtub full of like bubbly hot mud. Mm. And it's like mud mixed with like mineral water and like volcanic ash. So it's like a bunch of things and you literally like submerge yourself in there. And it's like you and your partner are completely naked. So you got to be real comfortable with the person you're going with because you are like butt naked. It's kind of cakey. No, listen, it gets crazier. So then you're laying in the thing, you're laying in the, the bed and there's a girl speaking to you from like behind a curtain. And she's like, okay, cover yourself up as much as you can. And when you're as covered, I'm going to come in and cover up the rest of you. <laughs> so she came in and me and Jake are underneath the mud and she like, pulled the mud over my shoulders she covered like literally covered every single part of me except for my face and my face was just like leaning on the edge of the bathtub and they put like a hot towel over your or a cold towel over your head because the mud is so hot you can only be in there for 15 minutes but when I tell you this mud is in every single crevice of your body like it is crazy so then after the 15 minutes it's so it felt so good it felt like you were in like slime Mm -hmm. but like in a good way so you get out and you have to wash off because the second part of the treatment is a mineral bath so you have to literally like shower next to your partner but like you are the mud is everywhere so you are full (laughs) like scrubbing the mud out of every part of you and I was like damn if this was like early on in my relationship I don't know what I would do like it's like very humbling to just be standing next to your partner butt naked cleaning what does your skin feel like after (laughs) 
it's like Water. really warm. Mm. I felt like the whole thing, like if you do it a lot, I feel like the benefits are like inflammation and like mm. bloat, like, I don't know, you know, they spas always like list off a bunch of things. But in the moment, I definitely just felt like lighter. I felt like my muscles were more relaxed. Wow. Um, but then after that, you get to like a mineral bath, which is just a clear bathtub full of mineral, mineral water. You sit there for 15 minutes and it was like so weird. Like the worker was just coming in and like giving Jake stuff and he was just butt naked and she was just a normal she was like our age she was really pretty i was like damn this is crazy <laughs> i'm sure they've seen it all then. and that's the thing she didn't make it weird it wasn't like a weird situation but i just had this moment where i was like i'm fine being naked in front of her but like damn jake's just so was this your peak <laughs> this was my peak it was so much fun it was also just like crazy i've never like experienced that before um but that was my peak and i was so excited to tell you guys about it because wow. i feel like if you have the chance you have to do it sounds lit I know. yeah it was really fun I feel like my pit, ugh, my pit is the fact that I can't fucking drink anymore. Like it oh. is becoming such a huge part of my personality that I hate is that I can't drink. I get so fucking sick. I talked about this last season and it's still a problem. I made an appointment with a doctor because I was damning this girl and she was like, I really think you have an allergy. If you go to the doctor, they can give you medicine. So I have a doctor and I will keep the podcast updated because I know a lot of people are feeling the same way. But I, that's my pit. I actually got a, you know, I believe in BuzzFeed over everything. <laughs> um, I actually got a BuzzFeed notification. I was going to send it to you. And it was saying how um, you might have an allergy, uh, alcohol intolerance, mm -hmm. a non-allergy or something like that. I'll send mm -hmm. you a full thing. But I'm like, yeah. BuzzFeed saying it, it's the girls a, are out there having allergies. I know. I wonder if they like make alcohol like a little different or what I'm drinking is different. I don't know. But that's my pit is that I still can't fucking drink. Damn. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 soon. Damn. What about you guys, Linz? Well, uh -oh. for the girls, little Lindsay's not doing so great. <laughs> Want to start with the pit? The pit? There's tons of pits. I have two armpits, so I'll give you two. Yeah. Number one pit was, Bailey and I have a few things in common. Some are more obvious than others. But um, we both don't have jobs. So, yeah, um, yeah I'm no longer employed. Um, Hit the road, things, Jack. Yep, that's pretty much what they <laughs> You're told me. You're taking a break. Yes, I'm taking a break from working. And you know what I will say? That it has been, like Bailey said, very relaxing. I've been enjoying my time at home. I've been, you know, really leaning on my friends and family. It's been, like, really eye-opening to see your friends and your family be there for you. And it's really, really mm -hmm. nice. Um, but with that being said, like Bailey said, I have had to sacrifice. Um, my eyelashes look the way that they do because I can't afford to get them done anymore. Um, so <laughs> if anyone great. wants yeah, to. Yeah, they look fast. Oh, I got some strip lashes for you. Don't worry. Period. I'm going to have to start getting those. I am going to do press on nails. This awesome company called Quickies yes. um, sent us some nails. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to press those on. Um, my second pit is <laughs> um, my apartment drama. So. For the listeners, Brandon and I, our codependency era is kind of over, not really over. Not We're, really. It's, it's never <laughs> going to be over. Um, we decided to move out. Yay. Brandon moved into a, let me just paint the scene for you guys. It's a breathtaking building. The management is so nice. They even know me. Like, call me by my name. Um, pool, comfy bed, like bedroom, like plush. I said, I can't afford that. So I'll move across the street. And uh, across the street is what I like to call whipped cream on top of a mud pie. I'm having a plethora of issues to the point where tonight is the first night I'll be sleeping in the apartment. And I have lived there for now mm, 17 days. Um, so you can imagine the hell I'm going through. Mm. Um, my management company, they have the brains of second graders. Um, second graders may be smarter than them. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? These people aren't. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, so yeah, it's been hell. I'm probably going to end up sleeping at Brandon's. A lot, maybe Bailey's, yeah. if she'll have me. We have a guest. We have two Casey's guest house. Yep, it's comfy. Um, so get your, your couches <laughs> ready because little Lindsay's coming to stay. We got you, bro. Um, so yeah, it's been hell. Um, but my peak. Brandon has actually been hooking it up. A lot of really cool things we've been doing. We'll obviously get into them. We had an excellent Memorial Day weekend. But... A free dinner at Nobu. Oh. I'm sorry, mm. but that was my that's peak. a damn good peak. Yeah, that was a good absolutely peak. scrumptious. I ate down quite literally, <laughs> um, and I'm grateful for you. And that's my peak. That's a good one. Love it. Hey, Brand. How's hey, y'all. <laughs> okay, we've got some mage life updates. My peak is to Lindsay's point. Unfortunately, my apartment. I do. <laughs> I love her bad. Love her bad. I've just been. 
really looking forward to having like a new space and it is so much bigger than our old place. I have a huge, massive bathroom now. I've got new furniture. It's just been a beautiful closet, a beautiful yeah, closet. closet. It's been not to rub it in your face. <laughs> it's it's, been, it's, okay. it's been really, really nice. That's probably the only good thing going on in my life. I am officially single, y'all. That is the pit. Um, I haven't really talked about it on social media just because I've been working on boundaries and therapy. Um, And it just was like such a special relationship. It was my first relationship. I didn't want to like post something like... Because once you post something, it's on the it's on the internet forever. Mm-hmm. Even if you delete it, people mm-hmm. screen record, it's there. So I really just wanted to take the month of May to heal and feel. Um, and I'm like still in the process of doing that. But you learn a lot through breakups. I never, I always listened to my friends who had gone through breakups and I empathized, but I never understood until I was like in this situation because like, you feel like you like lose a part of yourself. Mm -hmm. Like your identity is different. Like I was 25 years old when I got into that relationship, my hobbies, my dreams, the things that I did, the people I hung out with were totally different than me now, 27 single again. So it's kind of like a rediscovery, but I'm trying to have like a very positive outlook on it. You know, I'm in a new apartment, a new phase of my life, and I'm just trying to like juggle the transition, but it's kind of like a fresh start, I guess. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, that's my updates. (laughs) Like you said, it's a fresh start. And I think Mm -hmm. it's good. Like I told you the other day, like we're going to a new month, a new quarter, halfway of the year. I feel like it's such a, and you move to a new place. I feel like it's not divine. Maybe it's divine timing. I feel like it's a new Mm -hmm. chapter of your life, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. And I have like really exciting things coming up. I guess that's part of my peak too. Like I signed like, I took the whole month off of May pretty much to focus on the move and I signed like seven really incredible contracts for the summer, Mm -hmm. two of which were with my dream brands and one I cannot wait to share with you guys because it's like a full campaign. So good things are happening. It's just weird when like you're so used to celebrating wins with someone and you just have to learn like, you know, celebrating them on your own and with your friends and Mm -hmm. truly like you guys have been so amazing. Like, Bailey, I have to shout out you. Like, you've been such an incredible support system. Bailey helped me move. Um, Like, you've just been so great. All of you have been so great. Like, you find out, like, just how amazing your friends are Mm -hmm. in, like, really dark times. And Mm -hmm. this month did remind me, like, wow, I'm so fortunate and privileged to have so many incredible people looking out for me. Um, I think also, like, what... and. What better time to, like, go through a breakup if you have to go through one than, like, summer? Yep. Like, at Mm -hmm. least you're not, you know, going through this huge change and feeling really lost and confused, like, in the middle of fucking winter when it's cold and you're stuck inside. Like, it's nice. You are going into this phase with a good headspace. Like, you guys had an amicable situation. Yeah. You're going into it in the best case scenario for the worst case scenario. Like, you've got everything Mm -hmm. you need. If if you're going to have to go through a breakup, you have, you know, you're in a really good place and it's going to be summer. It is summer. So that's like a really good plus to be able to go into that when it's nice out. Yeah. Yeah. And as things get better, I will catch my spirits back up and I'm sure there will be great stories for you guys. Me and Bailey now, another (laughs) single girl over here. We've got, we'll have a lot of fun with it. But speaking of summer, I just need to manifest this for everybody. Summer 2024 It's a Kesha summer. It's a feral (laughs) sleep bag summer. It's a sunglasses on in the club summer. It's a filthy dirty martini with blue cheese olive summer. (laughs) This summer, it's going to be it. I feel it in my bones. It's going to be crazy. I already had an amazing Memorial Day weekend to kick it off. I am going to be drunk this summer and I'm not going to feel bad about it. Sorry to anybody at home. And I respect anybody that wants to have a wholesome coastal grandma summer. Have the summer that you want. Personally, I'm going to be in the streets. Yeah. The streets are calling. I feel like this past weekend from World Day weekend, like, ooh, we we needed that, baby. We needed that bad. I just like, oh, I forgot what it's like to get drunk. Like. (laughs) I was just having a time in my life because I feel like sometimes like I can't get the like alcohol down, but I'm like, oh, it's in my system and like being outside, acting a fool. I will say like on top of what Brandon said about like gassing you up a little, not that this is the Bailey show, but I'm going to make it the Bailey show real quick. Not only have you been an excellent friend, but you've been an idiot. Like (laughs) this weekend or last weekend was one of the first weekends in a long time. And I think a lot of that has to do with my mental health, just not being myself really. And like, I felt that this weekend a little Mm -hmm. bit, but 
your energy was just so immaculate. Like we had so much fun, like just being absolute dickheads. Like it was just something that I, I totally get what you mean by like, this is going to be the summer because if this is the energy that we're bringing already, like it's going to be, it's time. time. Yeah. I realized like, I forgot what weekend, whatever the weekend before Memorial Day, we went out in Philly and I was just acting a fool and acting an idiot. And I thought it was, we went, we went to, to the bars. gay bars. Yeah, we went to bars full of gay bars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was just acting like a like an idiot, but I was having so much fun, just like mm-hmm. being obnoxious, like in a funny way. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck about any of these people because they're never going to see me again. But I'm like, this is what's making the night. Just like yep. making mm-hmm. yourself have fun and just being stupid and shimming through the crowd. <laughs> like it's so and like not caring what yeah. anyone thinks or who's there or who's at the next bar. It's so like, freeing. Like it just mm-hmm. oh, I feel like a like I don't know like an angel with like feathers. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's a insane shit at this point. I'm oh, excited. Man. I know. Um, so, I mean, summer's coming around the corner. So we're getting the hot girl summer talk. Mm, hot yeah. girly summer yeah. talk. I mean, I have to kick it off, you guys. I have something to share with you all. I need to hear Let's it. hear it. So, Sips is back. For those who do not know about Sips, it is a citywide happy hour every summer in Philadelphia. It's from today when the episode launches wednesday june 5th to august 28th i believe now let me fill you guys every wednesday did you say that Mm -hmm. yep every wednesday in the summer so citywide happy hour from 5 to 7 p.m seven dollar cocktails including drinks made with tequila six dollar wine five dollar beer beer sorry and half-priced appetizers during that time at select restaurants you can go to centercitydistrict.com slash slips and see what all the deals are this is an ad also (laughs) it really is it's not an ad just (laughs) genuinely need to fill you guys in but let me just tell y'all so if you want to do sips and you want to like just be wholesome enjoy the deals Plenty of restaurants. Mm-hmm. 1225 Raw Sushi. I heard they're going to do alcoholic snow cones. And then you can get like sushi, whatever you want. Some of the best restaurants in Philly join on this. Double Knot, Sam Pan, Barbuzo, Darling Jack's. So if you're like trying to catch up with a friend, schedule it for a Wednesday. Get some happy hour drinks. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. It's a great place to network, honestly. You'll meet mm-hmm. a lot of people who are co-working. If you're interning in Philly this summer, you have to enjoy sips. Like mm-hmm. my yeah. best sip summer was when I was a summer intern. But I, and honestly, all of the girlies, we love to like make a night out of mm-hmm. sips. Like we love to go crazy. The drink deals are great, but as you can imagine, even after the 7 p.m. happy hour is done, people just straggle in the city. Like it becomes a night. I have tears in my eyes. I'm like getting excited about something. Yeah, like what are you about to say? <laughs> For my feral girlies, one of the best spots to go is Uptown. Mm-hmm. They will have live DJs from 5 to 8 p.m. on tonight, DJ Jason Weiss, but then... At 8 p.m., they switch to live music, The Insiders. What? Wow. No! Mm-hmm. From 8 to 11 p.m., The Insiders will be at Uptown. Damn, they got a gig. That's awesome. Which is crazy. On that little ass stage? Where are they going to put them? I got no clue. I feel like they're going to set it up for That's them. So crazy. Uptown is a place to go for sips if you want to get crazy. Wow. Another place to go, Pagano's. That's a really great mm-hmm. social scene. Great place to meet people. But y'all, this is the one that I think I am most excited about. Every Wednesday, DJ Smooth will be at Vinyl from <laughs> 5 to 9 p.m. Smooth Waters and Smooth Teas will be $5. No. And then there is a post-sips after party at Wicked Wolf. Oh, my God. Wow. We have so to go. We, we have to go. We are getting drunk. For the listeners, I'm damn near in tears. Yep. Episode drops today. We're going tonight. Yeah, the episode does drop on Wednesday. Wow. So we've had going. some good like after party sit. Like that's mm-hmm. such a it's gonna be uh, it's an unexpected bop every single time. Mm-hmm. Yep. And also wow. Smooth will have a guest DJ with him every Wednesday. And tonight, y'all, it's DJ Monto. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. So there's our little there's our guide to sips. Damn, uh, that's wow. Crazy. We will see you fucking there. Yeah. yeah. I feel like those are all like like a little bit older too. I yeah. think they're trying to like For, make it back to like our yeah, because like maybe? we started going to Sips when Sips was like had just started. This was mm, aging us a little yeah. bit. This was like five or six years ago. We were still in college. Yep. And then we kind of like we weren't too old, but the places that we went when we were younger just weren't the same anymore. Mm-hmm. And like last summer, we were looking for like a little bit of like an older crowd. And I feel like all of the places like I feel like vinyl's an older crowd. Like I feel like yeah. this is like the elevated version. I of really Sips. like Uptown because I like it's I like up Uptown. outside. Like mm-hmm. they always come in those fucking uh, almost like surf. Yeah, surfboards. Like they have the bottle. The girls canoe. On. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, canoe. Oh, the canoe. I think yeah. that place is fun because like they play hip hop music. I think. I think they have hookah there. 
They were busting last year. <laughs> they really were. So fun. But like you said with the food, like I know me and Casey one time, we went to Bud and Maryland's mm-hmm. and just ate the food because mm-hmm. the food deals are good. Like mm-hmm. in almost every single restaurant in Center City yeah. is on that list. So restaurants will do, a lot of the restaurants are doing 15% off dinner after Sips. So I saw the Mulberry. Oh, wow. When mm-hmm. Sips is done at seven o'clock, they're doing 15% off and the Mulberry's food is delicious. That is. So that's good. how Wait, you that's make a, a deal. Yeah. Like that's smart on their part. Oh, Wednesday is the new Friday. Wow. Yeah. I'm so glad they kind of redid the structure. It sounds like mm-hmm. they have the insiders. It sounds like they want like not such a younger. I mean, we were, I was going there when I was like a sophomore or junior in college. Like I know I wasn't 21. We would get dressed and put on fake business casual outfits <laughs> to yep. go to Sips to make it seem like we worked in the city. I put on my best Zara. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That's insane. I have a hot take or a question, really. This is like off the record. Do you think that other people in cities get hype over DJs? Like we get so excited. Like I full blown went up to Montone at the end of a sin brunch and I said, I want you to DJ my wedding. And he was honored. He was like, oh, and I go, but I'm not even getting married. Like the (laughs) fact that that man is on the roster as my DJ, like it's like, do you think other people get hype over DJs? Is it a Philly thing? I don't, I don't know, know if it's a Philly thing. I feel like it's just like a smaller city thing. Like yeah. I can't imagine like LA getting excited unless it was like name, like big name people. But mm. I could see like, like my sister lives in Denver and I could see people getting more excited in Denver because it's like a little bit of a smaller yeah, city. Like yeah, like Boston, Baltimore. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure it's like similar vibes. We also just drink a lot. We've been out. We've, been, we've known some DJs since college. Yeah. Like we've been, We literally have known them for years. <laughs> But yeah, Mm -hmm. so that's my rules for the summer. Like I said, we are having sips. We are having a Kesha summer, a feral Mm sleebag summer, drinking martinis at dinner summer, gossiping and talking shit by the pool summer. It's going to be a fucking summer. That goes along with my rule. My rule for summer is that no shower happy hour is a mindset. It's not an action. Mm -hmm. Oh, Just go with it. Just if your friends are texting you, don't care what you look like. Don't care what you're wearing. If you're in your bathing suit and you don't have any makeup on, just go. Just like kind of what you're saying, like just have a feral summer, like no shower, happy hours. Just do whatever you're, Mm -hmm. do whatever feels good in the moment. Have fun. Like don't put pressure on it. Like don't be like, oh, but I have to go home and get ready and redo my makeup and wear a cute outfit. If you're wearing what you're wearing, go out, have fun. It's it's just a mindset. No frills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say mine is, and this is like a saying I always say, so I'm actually letting this one to the public. (laughs) Um, All chaos, no drama. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. every, cause I, I, like almost every single night when we used to like go party party. I mean, I guess we still do that. Like I'd always say, all chaos, no drama. Like have as much fun and chaos, cause like when you look back, summer's only three months, mm-hmm. and like just enjoy it as much as you can. Do all the chaos, but keep it tight and neat. Like no drama. Don't start unnecessary things. Keep it more positive in the chaos realm mm-hmm. and yeah. not so negative with drama. You know, mm-hmm. kind of piggybacking off of that. My rule is do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. It is such a short time period where you only get a few warm days do what you want to do don't let someone convince you to do something you don't want to if you want to lay out in a, in a bathing suit outside of your house do that if you want to go get freaky with your friends do that if you don't want to go to the bar but you might want to go to a different bar go do that like mm-hmm. do what you want to do because the the, the snow's coming <laughs> it will come and you'll be pissed that you didn't get freaky winter is when coming. you had the chance no, winter is coming. <laughs> that's a good, like, if somebody, like, doesn't want to do something, just be like, well, that's fine. Winter's coming. So <laughs> yeah. you made your choice. Mm-hmm. You you made your decision. Mm-hmm. Wow. I personally won't be sitting inside at all. <laughs> but see y'all in the street. We're outside. All right, you guys. Speaking of summer, I have a would you rather for this summer. Would you rather have a super fun, amazing summer fling slash situationship but it leaves you mentally unstable come fall. It does not go past summer. You want it to go longer, but you end the summer basically heartbroken and in shambles. Or have a celibate summer. No sex for all summer. What would y'all pick? I know what I'm picking. Say it, girl. I think if you have an amazing fling for summer, that's great. But now you're going to mess up your fall and you might even mess up your winter depending how badly that toxic relationship Mm. fucks you up. Whereas if you just have like a celibate summer, that doesn't mean you can't still have like flirty flings. You just can't actually do anything. But then when fall comes, you're in a great headspace and then you can do something for fall, do something for winter. But if you get in a toxic headspace, you're kind of messing up more than just one month. It's like one month bad versus the rest of the three seasons being pretty good. (laughs) I know y'all don't agree, but no, I, I see that. And what's, with the celibacy, 
am I still allowed to touch myself? Oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah, yeah. then I feel like I see I see what you're saying. Because, mm-hmm. like, mental health-wise, I kind of want Casey's side. Yeah, like, why ruin your fall, you mm-hmm. know? It's my favorite holiday, too. Or so, favorite season. I guess I should pick the celibate summer. Because I'm probably going to have a celibate <laughs> summer regardless. <laughs> However, I feel like, yes, to your point, it will ruin my mental health for a few months. I will always look back on that summer and be like, that was the summer that I was getting with so and so. Like, you know, I'm delusional. <laughs> but like, you guys have had those summer where like you think, like, oh my God, that was that summer that I was hooking up with this person. Mm-hmm. And you recover. And I feel like we're still like Maybe for the past three summers. We can still <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah, you're right. To Bailey's point, you know, chaos can be good if it's good stories. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit of drama, but like mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh, it is kind of fun. Yeah. I think it's fun. <laughs> Trust me. I think it's fun. But I just like, I can't Oof. ruin two to three seasons versus just having one season of my year. Like, you're eh. making yeah. the right choice. You know? Oh, yeah. You're it doesn't mean you have to be celibate this. like you lock yourself in the basement. True. If we're talking that level of celibacy, then that's different. Yeah. Like, no. I have like a. But if you can still be outside, you just can't be under the sheets, then I think it's mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. What about you, Lens? I don't know. It's kind of a a lose-lose for me. (laughs) Think about it. Well, Casey, your point is very valid. And if I had a normal brain, I would agree with you. But I've always had toxic relationships. It's like the back of my hand. I know it so well. What, am I going to give up something I already know? Ridiculous. I'm not giving up sex. Like, (laughs) yeah, I'm picking that. I just, you know, you you knew better, you do better. And I I don't know better. So you get what you get. Period. I love that. Yeah. Mm. Damn. Sound bite. Also, <laughs> the chaos does sound fun. There's a yeah. little toxic in all of us. If you yeah. have a good story, you can be like, I do look back on some weird times I have that have ruined my summer. And I just talked about it the other day. I said, oh, remember blah, blah, blah. He was crazy. I always think back to the I think uh, more <laughs> fear. Yeah. I think on the flip side, if you are going to have a toxic summer, like go all the fuck out. If you're yeah. going to ruin your mental health, you might as well make it worth it. You might yeah. as well actually have a good summer. Don't go halfway. Like, yeah. yeah. If you're going to ruin your time, mm-hmm. drink and draw, ruin it, fall on mm-hmm. your ass, make your friends crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, it sounds like a blast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Summer really is wild because I feel like most people in the summer like look their best, but are mentally sometimes doing their worst. <laughs> and it's like your drinking problem is so crazy. You're frying your skin in the sun every day, but you look good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. No, you're right. All right. Well, we've had a month of FYPs mm. to catch up on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is on everyone's FYP? Can I be so for real? Yeah. So lately, like within the past two days, I've been on like animal birthing TikTok lives. Birthing? Yes. Oh. Yes. Like I watched the other day a sphinx cat and like one of the like naked hairless cats give birth on my live. And I like don't even know why I watched to the, like I watched it pop out. Why did I have to um, sit there? And I've seen multiple, <laughs> every time I scroll, I'm just seeing a ton of like dogs or cats just like uh milking their animals now i'm sorry to ask this question but i've got to know like what is the camera angle uh kind of like <laughs> like is it like all up in the bit like it shows everything it's on there yeah like i watched wow. like it was a poor sphinx cat she was so fat and like i just watched like her contractions like i i saw like the hole Whoa. like and the hole and oh my god and that's allowed i guess so all the oh. cops are like is this allowed <laughs> i regret asking and I, this question <laughs> so sorry it was she had like twelve thousand viewers in there i was like clearly i'm not the only oh, one. Oh my god well mine did you guys see my instagram yes. last night yes. mine is these people who like sit under a water balloon and the more people that join the live the closer it gets to popping and they act like they're about to die they're like no 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 please 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 please." and they get a ton i haven't seen one pop yet someone dm me was like oh you're missing out like i got so lucky i saw one pop because i was like oh this is definitely a scam but like i don't know where these people get the contraptions like we are truly living in a black mirror episode and (laughs) Mm -hmm. a simulation american horror stories for real yeah. No, I haven't seen that one yet, but I'm very. You just have to kind of sit. Sometimes you have to sit on the lives for a good twenty minutes. Yeah. Like, you sit on them like that. I mean, like I was like, damn, if she already gave one, I watched like two or three pop out. I feel I feel too personal when I watch someone's live. Like, <laughs> it, unless it's you, Brandon, because sometimes I'll clue into yours. Like, I, 
even someone I love, I just feel like weird being a part of lives. Mm-hmm. They're like not, I haven't reached that part of I watched yet. one last night, but I didn't say anything. I'm like, no, nah, I feel creepy. That was like, a good one. I feel like a voyeur. <laughs> I love when I get like <laughs> I a good it. live. That's when you did your apartment tour, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. I was like, oh, I feel creepy because I didn't say anything in this <laughs> chat and I'm just watching him. Just a lurker. Yeah. What's on your FYP lens? I don't know. Back to the lives. I feel like I've been on that bomb party jewelry revealing. It's like where those people have those cubes and they put the cubes in this water and the water like bubbles and then they like reveal jewelry. It's a full blown pyramid scheme, but I can't escape. And they'll be like, you got dreaming this year. Blue topaz with sterling silver market price $210. Number one, no, it isn't. I could have bought that at Claire's for $15.50. And number two, the names are so cringe. They're so creepy. I hate them, but I love them. And I sit there and I watch all the reveals. And they do this thing where you can reveal diamonds. So like they'll put the, the jewelry in. And if it bubbles and it pops and it's a diamond, they'll be like, oh my God, it got diamonds. And I don't know what the bomb party people get if they get diamonds. Like, I don't know what the actual, like, I guess, what are, whatever they're called, the sellers, mm-hmm. what they receive from revealing diamonds, but it's a party for sure. And they're the, the ugliest diamonds of all time. It, it's it's oh, a treat. Wow. You know what's crazy is I feel like at least with FYPs, like, even if it's not living on your FIP, you've at least like maybe seen it in a TikTok mm-hmm. or you've maybe heard of it. But I feel like lives could not be any more fucking polar opposite. Like the three yep. things that y'all <laughs> just described literally sound insane. And it's like TikTok lives are just their own universe <laughs> really where like you are. rarely are on the same kind of lives as your friends. Like mm-hmm. my lives, because I skip past them really fast, so I don't see them a lot. But it's usually where they're just like, like comment your name and I'll write it. And they like write oh, names yeah. in like oh, calligraphy like yeah. or they'll do it in like bubble letters or like whatever. That's like mine. So yeah. it's like, y'all are so different. <laughs> it's funny. Like I just thought about like all of us like separately. This is what we do on our free time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like watching these stupid ass lives. And I do sit there and watch it. I'm not going to lie to you or the viewers. Like I, I do I enjoy it. I give birth. Then <laughs> I saw her more on my page and she had like eight babies. And I was like, damn. That's watching it is funny because that's why this one thing is living on my fyp but that trend where it's like i remember when i lost my mind and then people are showing like the crazy Uh things they did when Mm. a guy said that they liked it i will watch every single fucking one because i think they are so funny like the way we are all so fucking insane and like when you're in high school and your crush says he likes one thing so like like I remember oh, when I yeah. was in high school, my crush said he liked stepbrothers. So I learned the whole lyrics to Boats and Hoes. And I would like ask my friends to play at a party so I could like rap it because I thought I was so cool oh, that I knew the words. Oh, Casey God. Jones. The difference is I didn't take a video and post it on Instagram, yeah. which is yeah. what a lot of these people are doing. But I've seen that. We are crazy as a generation. Like the yeah. things we'll do. Just impressing the good lady. one. Mm-hmm. You saying Topaz triggered my nostalgia. Y'all remember in Webkins where you went to the curio <laughs> yeah. shop? Welcome to curio shop. <laughs> Hope you find what you're he looking was for. Fine. Wait, you know that? You know that um, <laughs> old TikTok trend that was like, if I won the lottery, like I wouldn't tell anyone what there would be signs. Mm-hmm. I made that and I made the signs, the curio shop. And I was like, I would spend so much money there. And it got removed. Oh. oh. I thought it was going to go viral. I was like, this is so funny. Did y'all play Neopets? Mm-hmm. No. No. Oh, damn. I am rich in Neo points. <laughs> I was all about Webkins. That was, yeah. I had like I did 40. Both. What about Millsbury? Oh yes! my God. I went hard on that's that. like, because mm-hmm. Millsbury was like the, that's like the Pillsbury. Like the cereal? Yeah, the yeah. Cereal. Like poster. Mm-hmm. You could do the snowboarding. Yep, you yeah. could make like people. Oh, that was the mm-hmm. best. I was more of a star doll girl. Oh, oh so I good. was my so That was my yeah. first experience with like having an internet boyfriend, but like I was probably not talking to you. Mine was Club <laughs> Penguin. <laughs> Oh, I never had Club Penguin, but all my friends did. That was really underrated. <laughs> like, now I think about, like, I didn't have a boyfriend on Stardoll in the fifth grade. That's why some grown-ass man. Stop. <laughs> like, that's so hard. I didn't do anything. Like, I was like, mm-hmm. this, I'm like, this is my cute doll. Damn, I was on the internet. Like, damn. Yeah. RuneScape, y'all play that one? I didn't. It was, like, no. medieval shit. Wait. Wow, really? I, I, I did, did play that. you as someone who would have played RuneScape. Oregon's Trail. Like, no, the Oregon. Oh, tra- yeah. I just told those about like, the Oregon Trail. We don't play those like at school, like yeah. Oregon's mm-hmm. Trail, like RuneScape. But like I play RuneScape at home. I was really into like changing my aim icon. Like, do you mm-hmm. remember that website, like Iconator or yeah. whatever yes. it was? And you could like pick different ones. I wow. like I took that as like an identity. Or you can change your cursor too. Mm-hmm. Oh, life was so simple. We just gave her and writing your away messages. Yeah. BRB. 
Oh, I just thought about the one time my mom like put on my away message. This is Bailey's mother. She is grounded. Like, do not like. Oh, I remember I snuck on the computer and I was like, <gasps> and like I like took it down. I was like, are you kidding? Then I like, changed like my other away message. The I only- would always just write text it T X T. Like what? <laughs> the only time I ever got grounded in grade school, I begged my sister to take care of my webkins i was like you have to go in every day and you have to feed them and you have to get money and she every day went on because i wasn't allowed to go on the computer Damn. she took care of my webkins that's really mm-hmm. good that's a good girl did you say that's a good girl mm-hmm. <laughs> good sister <laughs> oh you are such a sick shit <laughs> me that's fucking weird <laughs> you're right <laughs> it was weird <laughs> Oh, Y'all are annoying. I'm Aggie. Sorry. Y'all are Aggie. Aggie as hell. So what, what's going on? Well, <laughs> glad that was everybody's for you page. But I'd like to introduce a new segment. We asked. Y'all answered. So we're going to... um. Wait, what is this segment called again? Ask the girl. She's fired, y'all. <laughs> I literally can't think today. <laughs> they ask. We answer. We're yeah. introducing <laughs> a new segment I can't talk. called Ask the Girlies. At least girlies. you're really pretty. Yeah, that's case. true. Mm-hmm. We're introducing a new segment <laughs> called Ask the Girlies because the number one feedback we got from season one was that you guys wanted an advice segment. So we put up a little Instagram story. Make sure y'all are following us on Instagram. And we are going to answer some advice questions for you. So the first one is <laughs> how to tell your friend that they need to leave a man gently. Yikes. Hmm. So this is hard. It's very, very hard. I think whenever you are telling your friend that they kind of, whenever you're telling your friend how you feel about their relationship, you have to be super delicate about it. Um, And I think you also need to remember to protect yourself because at the end of the day, when your friend is in a relationship that you think is like really bad or toxic, it could only spread to you if you let it. Like you have to set a boundary. And I think the best way to do that is reminding your friend that you love them, reminding them that you want the best for them. And I think sharing their your opinion, but in a, to their point, gentle way of just being like, hey, I've heard you talk about this situation. I know it's upsetting you. I love you and I want the best for you. From my perception, I think that this situation isn't your end all be all. It's not the best for you. And then depending on how they react to that, you have to move accordingly. Because if they're like, Thanks for your opinion, but I don't care. Don't give it again mm-hmm. because it's not your job. Your friend, you cannot lose yourself trying to control the actions of others. So I think gently remind them that you love them, you care for them, and that you want the best for them and allude to the fact that you don't think that their current relationship is the path to get there. But if they don't take that advice, don't kill yourself over it because you're only going to stress yourself out and hurt yourself out. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think on the flip side too, if you are the friend where your friend is coming to you and saying that they don't like your relationship, like you need to be understanding and know that it's not easy for them and like maybe take yourself out of it a little bit because it's so easy to like Mm -hmm. keep yourself in it and be like, this person's attacking me. They're attacking Mm -hmm. my relationship. Like maybe if your friend is coming to you, know that that was a really hard step and that wasn't easy for them to do that. So like take yourself out of it and and try to maybe just see from their perspective and and know that they didn't just do this on a whim because they were in the mood. Like it's a lot to tell your friend that. Mm -hmm. And also like know your friend. Like there have been situations where like, you might think it's a good idea to tell your friend something, but you know how your friend is going to react. So being delicate and kind is like the mm-hmm. best approach. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you can go into a situation not really realizing that your words can impact somebody. So it's just really important to like know who you're talking to, like understand your audience and things like that. Right. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the next question. This one's a tough one. Would you tell on your friend if they were cheating? Oh, wow. Like, would you tell your friend's partner that they're mm-hmm. cheating like would you tell yeah well, that's Ooh, a big bowl not people my to, like, business come at me for my morals and ethics and shit but like i think situational like if, i agree mm-hmm. yeah i guess it's situational like i'm just thinking of like our guy friend like ryan and liz like <laughs> i feel like i'm just not to put y'all on the spot they're not cheating or anything but i feel like that would be situational because yeah. i'm friends yeah. with both parties i guess i could have just said that yeah, I think if you are friends with both people in the relationship, what I would do is say, hey, I don't think that that I know that I don't like that. You should never cheat. And I would literally say either you tell them or I will. Mm-hmm. Like I would give them that ultimatum. If now if it's a different situation where I'm not close to the person's partner, 
I would still tell my friend, I don't co-sign your actions. I don't like them as a friend and it makes me view you differently Mm -hmm. because I don't approve of cheating. I don't want to be friends with people that cheat. At the end of the day, it's your relationship, but just know you don't have my respect. I'm not going to tell on you, but I am judging you and I hope that you do better and I hope that you get yourself out of that situation. Mm -hmm. Now, the final one. If it is like a really bad relationship, like I'll use the word abusive, and like this person has been trying to get out of the relationship, like that's a whole other Mm -hmm. story. Like I'm not a therapist, I'm not a doctor, but I agree with Bailey. Like I think it's a very situational, but cheating is wrong and I would always hope that my friends would never cheat Mm -hmm. and I would tell them like, hey, if you do that, I'm not going to co-sign that. If If I'm friends with the person you're cheating on, just know if you don't tell them I am. Yeah, Yeah, that's a really good point. Like when I said it's not my business, like it really isn't my business, but it is my best business who I'm friends with. Mm -hmm. So it is really important. Like that's a character flaw. Like that's a problem. If you're going to cheat on somebody, like Mm -hmm. they're probably going to play you at some point too. There's no respect for relationships and that can mean friendships as well. And then in a situation where it is you're friends with both of them, that would just, that would be really, really hard. But nothing Mm -hmm. is worse than somebody, especially someone you care about, going around looking dumb. Like, Mm -hmm. The worst, I was that girl in college. So many of my friends told me, your boyfriend's cheating on you. And I was like, you guys are insane. He would never do that to me. It was girl after girl after girl. And I always say that I was the dumbest girl at Penn State. Like I always say that about myself. And I'm so upset with myself for not believing the people who told me. So I just can't imagine, especially like someone on this couch, like you being cheated on and me allowing you to look like that. Like it's just hard. Protect your friends always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn, I got sad. Ooh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> on a lighter note, we are doing immunity necklaces and we are going to take turns if we don't have an immunity necklace, which as you saw from season one, sometimes we were running out. <laughs> we're going to do immunity community and hear your guys' at home immunity necklace. And the first one was that being chronically late is not cute. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking sorry. at? What are you looking I'm so at? Sorry. I feel like. All right. If y'all can't tell, Lindsay has a problem with reading clocks. Yeah, she does. <laughs> and her internal clock matching or whatever. But you know what? It's um Let's see how you save yourself from this one, man. <laughs> <laughs> um Come on. Hold chest. You know what? You you've been doing when we were in I will say when we were at AC for Memorial Day weekend, you were doing better. She was like, guys, I'm gonna be ready by 10 30. And like she was. She was ready by 10 30. We left at 10 30. Even she picked us up at 2 15 on a dot. Like you have been getting better. It's when I start seeing the effort, I love that. Yeah. Aww, thanks, Bill. But when you show up mm. to a dinner at a Mata that started at eight o'clock and y'all show up at eight forty five nine, making me sit there look like a fool that's when we get into issues but that wasn't me like mm. that's crazy i was on time for that particular dinner mm. not to throw any shade to our you other friends in. mike walked in at the same time yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah being late is just like i agree it's not very considerate of other people especially when other people like move their day around to make things happen this is I actually had somebody ask me this in an interview once like a professional interview like what my professional pet peeve was and I said that it's being late like I think if there's a meeting on your calendar you have absolutely zero excuse to be late for it you know it's there you see it unless you're like another meeting's running late or you actually are in something but like manage your time better that's why people put things on people's calendars is to like make sure it's efficient so yeah. Yeah. that is one of my biggest pet peeves. i think the key word is chronically and that's the thing it's like if you're late here and there but it's like you're if you chronic. are chronically late it to your point it just is a it just shows you're inconsiderate of others and like their time is not valuable and when you're an adult when in general but especially when you're an adult everyone's time is so fucking valuable mm-hmm. we all work we all have lives we have houses to ca- take care of bills to pay like if you've got 30 minutes don't fucking waste my time like yeah. Mm-hmm. So, agreed. <laughs> yep. Oh, I feel like I just went to my roast. <laughs> it's okay, Lynn. I am, I do try. I'm just like, I genuinely think there's something wrong with my brain. Like, I don't know if there are any other late girlies out there, but there sometimes are. I'm just bad at it. Like, I, I literally look at a clock and I'll be like, I'm going to be on time for this. And then an hour and a half will go by and I'm like, I'm rushing for this. It's just <laughs> hard. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on to the next immunity community. Sorry, I literally almost just passed out. <laughs> um, this one's good. Um, bikers on sidewalks. And 
This is great because I actually did a, I made a tweet or I tweeted about this before. <laughs> I made a tweet, an X. Um, I, something about, I just like, I personally cannot sound bikers, whether on the sidewalk or on the street. And I know, I know, I know, I know they're good for the emissions and like the earth and blah, gas, blah, 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 blah. Like, I know, like, don't, I know. But like, come on. Mm -hmm. Like when you see a 10 ton vehicle behind you, move that ass and get in the bike lane. Like I, I understand. I understand they're great for the economy. Do not get me wrong. But I just think bicyclists, like they need to be, they don't have any spatial awareness sometimes. And like, mm -hmm. you're up against a fucking FedEx truck and you're trying to get in front of them. Like, let's be fucking for real. Or they're Sorry. like holding up like, 15 Ugh. cars on a city block because they're driving they're riding like so slow in the middle yeah. i know that people really share the road y'all bailey got roasted on twitter <laughs> when she talked about this so we tread lightly mm -hmm. but honestly i don't want to tread lightly i got because called I a donkey it, the worst thing about bikers as a driver is there is a designated bike lane in the street it's not on the sidewalk it's in the street and if you are in the street you need to follow the traffic patterns mm -hmm. so if there's a stop sign and it's a four-way intersection and you're biking what on earth makes you think i'm going to stop for you what i'm going to do is hit your ass with my car and that's going to be a lawsuit so if we could all just follow the stop signs the red lights the green lights i agree i've noticed that because i'm like wait aren't we all supposed to be stopping why are y'all especially like in northern liberties there's a four-way stop and y'all pe people are just rolling like myself and oh. if you hit them you're the one that's going to be in trouble because you're the one in a car and they're yeah. on a bike that's the biker be always has the right away who wrote that i thought it was a pedestrians biker. a biker wrote it. a biker mm -hmm. wrote that and right? those little electric bikes that is a car that is a mini motorcycle you cannot be on the sidewalk there's a bike lane for you know what whoever wrote in this immunity no, community they, they ate down, down. Mm -hmm. because bikers really they're on my list i'm also working for the ppa i hate and i know that this is proper etiquette so i have no reason to be a hater on it but i would like to change the etiquette i hate when you're walking in either a biker or a runner is like last on your last <laughs> nice. cool go the fuck around me i'm on the street too i have just as much like right to be on it if i'm going too slow for your pace you can slow down and pass me at your leisure you don't have to yell down my throat right we get it you're jogging you're so fucking active i'm walking cool walking is better on your knees and your joints so period on your left go go into the fucking river bitch like i'm over it i hate that shit we're walking on the river's casino like we're yeah. at a casino like mm. come on it's not my fault you decide to ride your bike there of all fucking places there's plenty of other opportunities get off the sidewalk stay in your fucking biker lane go to the wissahickon bike on a trail i don't even know how to ride a bike <laughs> Stupid. I think bikers belong in suburbs and boardwalks. And soul cycle. Or in the bike lane that this city <laughs> designates to the bikers. Absolutely. There are bike trails all over this city. All mm -hmm. over. This is a biker friendly city. Philly is the it most. Is. There's easy bike stands everywhere. Yeah. Figure it out. Mm -hmm. Every apartment True. has a bike room at this point. No car mm -hmm. room, but <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. You know, also, it's not crazy. do you have to pay to park your bike? You know how apartment complex will have your bike storage? Why is my car three hundred dollars to park? Why am I getting hit but by the PPA? Because yeah. you are killing huh. the environment with your emissions. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's okay. why. Fine, I'll give it to you. They are saving I love money biking, too. Just not in the middle of the street. I'm done. All righty, girls. Now to close it out, we have a brand new segi again. And if you remember from up, uh, season one, we as a group, do not particularly like unsolicited recommendations from others via DM. But however, we will be giving you guys unsolicited recommendations because we know you love them from us. <laughs> and that could be, we're going to give any rec recommendations of the week that we want to, and I'll kick it off. Mine is some media, and I just need to get this out. I have two medias. I'm going to get this one, first one out. That's not that important. But I'm not a spearhead of music, but I did call that Yeet was going to be on top. Didn't I say that? Two you years did. ago. This new young boy named Ian I-A-N. He's a nice, cute white boy from Clemson, but he makes some hood beats. And when I tell you he's going to be the artist of the summer, <laughs> trust and believe. Hmm. All right. Now, on to the real media. So I recently watched this show called Fleabag on Amazon Prime. And it's such, such a good show. Um, I think it came out maybe like 2015. There's, it's so sad because there's only two seasons. It's such a quick... Uh, I'm sorry, quick read. Quick watch, two seasons, six episode seasons, 25-minute episodes. The premise is very like just an adult woman. I want to see she's probably our age, 27, 28, and just being a messy woman dealing with family, relationships, and just like juggling the world. And like they do such a good job of portraying being a woman. Like there is one episode and she, it's also like very like she breaks the fourth wall. So it's kind of like a 
insecure girls, sex mm-hmm. in the city type of vibe. If you like those type of shows, it's like com- that coming of age, just being an adult yeah. and just mm-hmm. living this life. I can't wait to watch. It's so good. Like there's one episode and she's like, talking in her head but like to the camera like we're she's talking to us and she's like wow i look so good today like i know this guy's about to talk to me like you know when you're like in her monologue you're like oh wow this guy's about to talk to me and she's like oh he just walked right past like it's very like so like i say like these all the time like damn like this show's so relatable but this show i've watched and like i was so upset and i genuinely cried at the finale because it's like it was one of those like feelings where i was like damn like that's a real life situation and Mm. it could happen and like how did they portray it like that i was just like such an interesting cry, but I mm-hmm. highly recommend if you need a new show. Mm-hmm. Fleabag. Mm-hmm. And what's it on? Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. It's so good. I love it. And it's a British show too, so I feel like those oh, are always that makes the best. It better. Yeah. Hmm. Mine, I think, is Sushi Wednesdays at the <gasps> giant heirloom market. I just saw your TikTok. Yeah. Four ninety nine. If there is a giant heirloom around you, sushi becomes half off. Those nine ninety nine rolls are four ninety nine. Y'all, it's a great deal in this economy, and the sushi is good. I don't care what anyone says. That shit is gas. There's my unsolicited rec. Mine? Oh, you want to go? No, no, you got it, girl. Mine is for all my Philly girls. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I don't shut the fuck up about Ari Blanc Med Spa. I've gone there. I've done, like, three or four giveaways with them. But I've been talking to so many girls in my DMs who like tell me horror stories of other like med spas or other situations that they've been in. And it just is like so scary when you're dealing with your face to Mm -hmm. like go somewhere that you don't really like trust. And I, I literally like love every girl there and I've gotten my lips done three times. I've gotten two lip flips there and I've gotten Botox. So I've been there for a few different things and I got dermaplaning there. But they just like actually care about you. And Mm -hmm. so many people reach out and they're like, I went there because of you and it was the best experience. So if you are looking to get something done in the Philly area, I like wholeheartedly recommend them. I think they're like one of the best places and every girl there is amazing and they'll become like your best friend. So that's my unsolicited recommendation. Period. Thanks, Ariana Grande. Mine is the beauty section at TJ Maxx. And I know that this is something that people have talked about before, but I'm telling you, they have products. And it depends which TJ Maxx you go to. It really does vary location Mm. by location. But like, you can get prime products, half off, 70% off, kind of off. Like it is, it's it's always like Christmas when I go in there. It's a treat. Mm -hmm. You can get Elf Primer, um, like the Better Than Sex Mascara, Charlotte Tilbury. Like it's, Insane. Damn. Maybe not Charlotte Tilbury. Maybe I'm thinking of something you else. No, well, I, I feel can, like I've get, seen them there. But I feel yeah. like, yeah. You can get Anastasia Beverly, Beverly Hills there. Yes. Like, wow. Hair products, Amika, mm-hmm. like they have the best hair products ever. I get them half off at TJ Maxx. I need to save my wallet so much money. Yeah, that's a good tip. I forgot about that. A Maxinista. <laughs> Period. I'm a Maxinista. It's <laughs> like the time for the TJ Max credit card. Hell no. <laughs> never are you sure? Did. Like, why are they always ask? Okay, never mind. Never mind. We can't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a hell of a first episode. We are so excited for season two. We'll be talking a whole lot more shit next week. Stay fun. Stay feral. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>